Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? It's your guy. It's your guy, Mr. Haywood from Haywood's Pool and Spa. Haywood's Pool and Spa. All right, Haywood's Pool and Spa is located in the greater Antelope Valley area. So be sure to hit your guy up if you need issues, if you need service, or any of your spa and pool needs. All right, all right, all right. So anyway, yes, like I said, welcome, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as we get started, uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell <clears throat> so that you can uh, be in the now. Hey, now, you can be in position to catch the videos right when I go live or right when we upload new videos, all right? So that's just a little bit of homework. Uh, well, not homework, but housekeeping. So go ahead and get our housekeeping out of the way. Uh, this article comes to you today from none other than Pool and Spa News. Okay, so under the Ultimate Tech Manual. Okay, and today we're going to be talking about troubleshooting pool and spa filters. All right, so that's where you can find the information. Man, be sure to go check it out if you need to. Uh, that way you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, if for any reason. Uh, doing my cat, my podcast, you don't uh, understand what I'm talking about. Um, like I said, that's why we go ahead and um, it provides information. Also, you can look in the description box towards the bottom of the description box. I always make sure I, I uh, you know, put the different tags in and I also make sure that I put the links in for you to go and find um, the information that I'm talking about. All right. Cause we're Transparent here at Haywood's Pool and Spa. No secrets here at Haywood's Pool and Spa. All right? All right? So, that's what we plan on being. All right? So, let's dive into this article. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty lengthy article. So, uh, we're not going to do what we usually do. Usually, we kind of hang around for a minute to let the room fill up. But, man, I'm going to dive right into this thing. So, for those of you guys that are coming in late, uh, at some point, I'll stop. I'll reiterate what we're talking about. And then uh, whatever you miss, you can always just rewind the video and play it again. All right? All right, bet. All right, bet. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Troubleshooting pool and spa filters. All right? A handy guy for service technicians working on pool and spa filters. All right? So imagine the call comes in. It's like I said, stage. Like I said, the stage. Imagine the call comes in. The pool filtration system is on the blink. What's it do? In this troubleshooting guide, some common symptoms of ailing filters are presented with practical tips on how to bring them back into good health. All right? So before you dive in, that's what we're doing. We're diving into the pool industry, right? That is what we're doing. That's what we're doing. But before you dive in, please take note of this general rule, okay? When assessing an and operating filters performance, check the pressure gauge first and make sure it's working properly. Okay. Some techs carry an extra gauge and will test it on the filter to ensure that it's working well. Others suggest tapping the face or casing of the gauge firmly to make sure the needle's not sticky. Okay. A gauge that fails to indicate a rise in pressure not only compromises your ability to monitor filter cycles, but it can also be hazardous. All right. So, the filter gauge is very important as it, as it pertains to the pool's filtration system, okay? On the gauge is usually, we usually mark it. So, whether you're putting in a new gauge or whether you come into an existing system, if for whatever reason the tech before you, or let's say you're the first tech that's involved in this particular uh, filtration system, um, a rule of thumb is to Make sure the filters are clean, first of all, right? So maybe you got to take the filter out, put a new one in so that you can get a fresh filter reading. Then you want to make a mark on where the re reading is, okay? Then what you want to do is you want to count 10 PSI, 8 to 10. We I use, rule of thumb, we usually go with 10. 10 PSI, put a mark there. So you got your starting pressure, right, which is normal operating pressure, and then you have your pressure when the, when, when the filter's dirty and when it needs to be uh, backwashed, replaced, cleaned, etc. You make a marking on that gauge and that's basically it. So when you swing it through on your regular uh, filter cleaning, 
or your regular uh, service, you again, once you get to the pool house, you check that out. And if it's not where it needs to be, then you pretty much good to keep, keep on moving. But once that filter gets to, like I said, 8 to 10 PSI, whichever you choose to use, I use 10. Once it gets to 10 or past 10, then you know that your filter needs to be cleaned, changed. Something needs to be done with it, right? There's attention, 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 attention needs to be paid towards that filter, all right? So good rule of thumb, good rule of thumb, all right? So now... And like I said, and that's how you bring, you know, in your goal of bringing it back to good health. Okay, so again, before you dive in, please take note of this general rule. When assessing the operating filter performance, check the pressure gauge first to make sure it's working properly. All right. So like I said, some techs carry an extra gauge. It's up to you, depending on what you want to do. But like I said, just make sure that they gauge to the best of your ability is working properly. All right. Because again, if it doesn't monitor the cycles and it, it, uh, uh, or, or for, lack, for lack of better words, the rise in pressure, okay, then it, it could be catastrophic, right? It could be hazardous. It could be astronomical. Keep in mind as well that many symptoms of, mal of a malfunctioning filter system can be brought on by an adequate running time. The first step to troubleshooting is to simply be sure that the system is running enough to stay on top of the filtering demand. And so there's a rule of thumb, I, you know, uh, a rule of thumb, I believe, uh, for pools is six hours, okay, six hours or less, so basically six hours. So, you got to make sure that the timer stays on at least six hours a day, okay? It's running at least six hours a day. Um, uh, I've come across and I've heard a lot of stories about uh, clients with or operators that have clients with above ground pools and or some of them pools that are vinyl. Right, depending on your depending on your pool size or how often you use the pool, some operators may not leave it on. Right, you get some of the homeowners that'll come out right after you leave and turn it off. Right, because let's I got a pool, but maybe I'm worried about my pool pump running all the time. Basically, it's adding to my electric bill. Okay, there's ways to fix that too. Right. Let's just say you're dealing with a single speed pump. You can suggest to the customer a variable speed pump, which the, the pump now speeds up and slows down on its own based on the need. It's an option. Okay. It's just an option. I like to throw options out there. Uh, and so, with that being said, uh, what do you do in that case? Well, you got to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Is the pool staying on top of the filtering demand? And if it's not, we got to figure out a way to explain to the client that this is what needs to take place and what must take place. Otherwise, you're going to have these filtering issues. And if this is the, the reason behind your pool not being filtered properly, then that's really nothing I can do about it. You know, how do you tell the person that, hey, if you really can't afford it, don't use it? Well, that's a harsh way to tell them. It's always a nice way to do everything with a smile and with love and care. But you have to impress upon them that the filter has to run for an allocated amount of time in order to uh, stay on top or top of the filtering demand. Okay. Finally, it is important to point out that these guidelines are for general information only. Okay. You should always consult manufacturer literature for specific recommendations on and operating guidelines for each filter model you encounter in this field okay so now that's for your tech guys read the manufacturer's directions always man you know what you can never go wrong if you read the manufacturer's directions even if you think you know because soon as you feel like that you know everything that you failed because it in this trade in this field uh uh because now is uh, the beauty of things is the pool operators guys are now becoming a nationally recognized trade right ain't that awesome ain't that awesome you would no longer be looked at as a pool guy you're a tradesman right you're a tradesman you're providing a service a valuable service for those that are in need okay so always read the manufacturer's literature for specific recommendations and operating guidelines for each model you encounter in the field okay and if you're a homeowner doing it yourself then again 
refer to that manufacturer's direction for your particular model. Okay, that way you make sure that you're installing things and doing things properly. All right. So here's a symptom. Reduced flow of water through the filter. General tips. As dirt accumulates on the filter media, water flow will be restricted. And pressure within the tank will rise. When the pressure rises to a level specified by the manufacturer, it is time to backwash a sand or DE filter or to clean the elements in a cartridge filter. The ranges of operating pressure for filters vary depending on the type. Okay. Gradual pressure rises are normal. Gradual pressure rises are normal in the course of any filter cycle. If the rise in pressure is fairly consistent, then normal backwashing will suffice. If pressure begins to rise more rapidly than normal, called short cycling, or if the automatic cleaner stops working, it's time to look at the filtration system. Okay. Sand filters, for example. A typical range for high-rate sand filters, for example, may be 10 to 15 pounds per square inch at the beginning of the filter cycle. That is, the period between routine backwashes or cleaning on up to 20 to 25 PSI when backwashing is required. Okay? So, again, make sure that depending on what type of filter you use, you have a, uh, uh, like a starting at the beginning of the cycle, and then you have a, another pressure march to when, it, when, when it's time to, when backwashing is required. Right, another PSI reading when backwash is required. Again, you want something at the beginning when it's clean and when it's dirty, basically, for to know when to backwash or when backwashing is required. Okay. All right. DE filters. Some filter systems, mainly DE filters or large commercial installations or large high-rate sand filters, have pressure gauges installed on both the influent and effluent. Lines. What's that? What is that? Well, influence just means the inlet, and effluence just means the outlet. Okay, in, in, f, out. Um, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, as the media becomes clogged with dirt, the the in pressure, the incoming pressure, the inlet pressure, will become higher than the outlet reading. Okay. When the differential between the readings reaches a specified level, it's time to backwash the filter. And again, it's usually 10 PSI, right? So again, you got a beginning and you have a when it's yeah, you got you got a beginning pressure and then you have a, a dirty pressure, basically clean pressure, dirty pressure, if you want to just keep it simple. Okay. In and out. All right. It's gonna let you know when it's time to backwash that filter. Okay. So reduce water flow through the filter. That's how you know. That your filter is getting dirty based on the, your end and your out or your beginning and your start and your beginning and your end. And I don't mean end as where all the gauge uh, stops. End meaning e end, e -N -D meaning dirty, right? Clean, dirty, if you keep an example. A clean pressure, dirty pressure. So even if your thing starts at 10 PSI, because you want to believe that it'll be 0 to 10, but it may be 10. You may start at 10. When it gets to 20, it's time to clean. Start at 20. When it gets to 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, and so on, doesn't so far, but it's usually about 10 PSI, 8 to 10 PSI, okay? You got to make sure it's marked. Uh, that way you understand. And if you don't mark it on the glass, whatever you take notes in, whether nowadays they're apps, if you're still doing everything by the book, handwriting everything, just make sure you got it written down. Put out the particular book for that particular client, and, and, and uh, that way you stay on top of it, all right? All right, so again, as it reaches a specified level and requires backwashing of the filter. Okay, so that's that one. So let's go to the next symptom. Next symptom says low flow rates in the system. Okay, since that's, that's a symptom. Proper flow rates. If you get a low reading with the flow meter, but a high reading on the pressure gauge, something is restricting the flow. Okay, it could be one of several issues a plug filter closed jets in the pool, or an issue with the heater, okay? In rare cases, this problem is caused by a plug piping or a broken piece of equipment lodged upstream of the filter, okay? 
That's why you're getting low flow rates. All right. Pressure gauge is giving you a high reading because obviously the pressure is bagging all the way up to the filter. Okay. You put a flow meter on the water and you're like, wait a minute, my water is supposed to be flowing at this level and it's not. Okay, what's happening? Well, again, plug filter. If the jets are closed on the pool, that's going to create a back pressure. Some piping broken in, in between upstream of the filter, not downstream. Upstream meaning beyond the filter, beyond the filter. Okay. Then, then this is the, these are the things that can happen. Okay, so low flow rates and low pressure could be a restriction or an air leak in the suction piping or problem with the pump. Generally, the maximum flow rate through a one and a half inch PVC pipe is 55 to 60 gallons per minute. Through two inch plumbing, it should be 95 to 100 gallons per minute. Obviously, the bigger the pipe, the more flow, right? These figures are based on a standard hydraulic specification of an eight feet per section maximum velocity, although many prefer six feet per, per second or less through a suction line. And again, all that just depends on who put this thing together, who built it, and how they came up with their calcs. calculations. Clogged baskets. A drop in the return flow can be traced to a clogged pump strainer or skimmer basket. So clean the baskets, okay? Pump basket is going to be at the pump. Skimmer basket is usually out on the side of the pool. If it's an in-ground, it's going to be a little thing that you open up that you can get the dirt out of. Uh, or with that, you go backwards towards the pump, and on the pump, there's a basket on the pump, too, where debris that made it past the skimmer could be at the pump. Okay? All right? So clean the baskets. Make sure you clean the baskets. That's a, a, a good way to get away from that. Uh, clogged and pillar veins also re re will, will reduce the return flow. So in that case, disassemble the pump and clean the impeller. Okay. Uh, pump. If both flow and pressure readings are low, the pump may be undersized. Or you may have a clogged pump and pillar or lint trap. Now, pump being undersized is one of those things because, guys, if you got professionals coming in and they put that pool in, the most times the pump will be under will be sized properly. Where you can get an undersized of a pump, it's like when you buy them above ground pools, right? Say the pool costs you, you found it on sale at Walmart, you found it on sale at uh, Big Five, four forty nine. Now, quite naturally, that pump that comes with it, ah, I, you want to be willing to, to believe that the manufacturer that put that pump together has everything has has it right. And in most cases, the pump will be right. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, what I began to think of is the filter. A lot of times the filters are undersized because this is what it is. They're not going to filter the water, the property. So if you buy those above ground pools, side note, you will have to buy some type of sand filter uh, 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 that can basically filter more media than the one that comes with it. Right? That's, that's what, basically what I was just trying to say. But the pump most times should be the right size. If not, make sure you upgrade and get what you need so that your pump matches the filter. Your flow rates can match as, as it pertains to the, you know, the 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 size of the filter and the in the particular element that needs to be filtered. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So pump or motor trouble can lead directly to filtration problems. So keep that in mind as you troubleshoot the system. Pump has to be sized properly. If the pump motor is bad or intermittent, ain't doing what it's supposed to do, it's going to also lead directly to filtration problems because the water, the flow ain't right. Everything's based on your GPM and the amount of water that's moving through the system. Okay. Um, all right. So moving on, we're going to talk about another symptom. The next symptom is inadequate filtering action. Cartridge filters, for example, and we're going to start with cartridge filters, okay? Poor filtration without a rise in pressure may indicate torn or worn out cartridges that allow water to pass through without filtering. So make sure you replace those cartridges as needed. And as you pull the cartridge out, you'll be able to see if there's holes or the material's torn. Then obviously, those filters have run their course. You know, their, their course, their lifespan is over, okay? Make sure you replace them accordingly. Sand filters. 
charging in the same filter if the media have been charged improperly or inadequately channels may have formed in the sand and gravel bed and may be allowing water to pass through unfiltered so look for evidence of channeling or tunneling and recharge the filter if necessary okay charging and making sure there's enough media in that filter to do what it's supposed to do all right mud balls if the unit has not been backwashed thoroughly mud balls may have formed on the surface of the sand bed okay thereby limiting filtration action or in extreme cases the sand may have calcified and will no longer filter out dirt okay look for mud balls or evidence of calcified and if found backwash or remove the old sand and recharge the filter as necessary with proper as, as necessary okay with proper maintenance Filter sand normally has to be replaced every four to five years, though it may last longer depending on how often the pool is being used. All right. Because if ain't nobody never in the pool and you got perfectly clean water, meaning no bather bait, no bather waste, no bather waste, no bather waste uh, being filtered, then that filter uh, quite naturally is going to last longer. Okay. High values of people being put in that pool high volumes of bathing waste, high large volumes of chlorine and other chemicals being uh, 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 added to the water to, to create whatever type of uh, uh, circumstances. Obviously, filters being used more and it's not going to last, you know, the four to five years or longer. It could be shorter, right? Again, all depends on usage. So always keep that in mind. Okay, DE filters, coagulation. Poor filtration from these units often result from coagulation or solidification of the DE. The DE diatomaceous earth is a material that's put inside this cloth, okay? And so co coagulation or solidification of the DEV are problems. If you see hardening of the DEV, DE cake, remove and clean the elements per the manufacturer's instructions and recharge the filter with fresh DE, okay? Uh, with fresh DE, okay. Make sure that you follow that, guys, because it's very important. All right, DE introduction rate if the DE is fed into the unit by a slurry feeder, the unit may not be feeding enough DE into the filter to adequately coat the septa. Conversely, an inconsistent filter cake may result from feeding DE too quickly into a skimmer when recharging the system. The trick here is to watch the DE introduction rates and adjust them as needed, okay? Coating the filter, okay? If you have an oversized DE filter or an underrated pump, there may be inadequate pressure within the filter to properly coat the septum. So here, you need to check the manufacturer's specs and replace equipment as necessary. Sand and DE filters. Backwashing. If backwashing isn't performed frequently enough or for adequate periods when it, when it is performed, the media will not be cleaned su sufficiently. It always pays in these cases to follow manufacturer specs. Here we are again, guys. Make sure you follow those specs. Manufacturer specs. You have to follow what they're saying because they created it. They went through all the strenuous testing before this stuff could be brought to market. So they know what they're talking about. Okay. They know what they're talking about. Even if you have years and years and years of experience, please take time out to read the manufacturer's directions because new information is always is coming out all the time. And again, if you think you know everything, you've just lost everything because information and new information is always coming out. All right. So, so that's a good way to stay on top of it and to avoid shortcuts that may turn into headaches later on. Ain't no shortcuts, guys. Always go the full length to ensure what my supervisor used to, used to tell me on my job. Go above and beyond to ensure that your client or customer is getting the proper service that they need, all right? Because uh, you definitely don't want to create headaches later on. It's like I tell my kids, do it right the first time, and you don't got to spend your time doing it a second time, okay? If you don't do it right the first time, then I guarantee, I guarantee you're going to end up having to come and do it again, all right? So. Backwash lines. Watch out for inadequate or plugged backwash lines that may not be allowing sufficient flow out of the filter during backwashing. 
although rare. If a portion of the backwash discharge is retained in the tank because of inadequate flow, the backwash line will clog over time with the caked media. To address this, check the line for clogs and clear as necessary. All right. Next symptom, short cycling between backwashes. General tips, flow rate. Most often, short filter cycles indicate excessive flow rate through the filter. This indicates that the filter may be undersized or that the pump may be too powerful for the system. If you're comfortable with filter sizing equations, and you can also find that online. Again, like I said, we will talk about filter sizing in, in another podcast, but in this, for this information here, uh, if you're comfortable with the filter sizing equations, do a quick check on the numbers to be sure equipment is sized correctly. A manufacturer's technical representative should be able to help. Once that's all fine, install a properly sized system. Okay, again, filter, pump, pump, filter. They go hand in hand, right? Because you got it. The pump has to filter the proper amount of water. Gallons per minute is how it's rated in, y'all. To be able to get through that filter adequately, not too fast, but in just enough movement that everything filters properly and you don't have all this short cycling. You don't have the short cycling and all the different other options, other problems that come along with your filter and or pump, one being oversized or one being undersized, all right? So that's why they call it the system, okay? That's why they call, that's why they worded it a properly sized system. Contaminants. In other cases, short filter cycles suggest large amounts of dirt, debris, body oil, lotions, hair, or algae. Very high bather loads. Man, you're gonna believe in me one of these days. Very high bather load or pet usage or excessive fertilizing of plants and lawns. Okay lead to overworked filters. So, you got So, if it's short filter cycles, uh, uh, meaning that the filter is dirty faster than what it needs to be, then again, it's dirt, large amounts of dirt, debris. You may have a garden or something around. You got trees hanging over your pool. You got you know, maybe your yard was unfinished and you never got to land the, the nice, beautiful grass or the or the or the artificial grass. And you got all this dirt that blows when the wind blows and it keeps getting into you into that water where well, everything in that water at some point is going to make its way through the filter. OK, again, your filter is being overused. You got dogs with a lot of hair on them and they constantly in the pool. Some people love their animals and they allow their animals you know to run freely and if, if that's the case then this is another issue of why your filter is going through what it's going through all right so discuss your options with the pool owner to see if changes in routines are necessary and also backwash the filters as as needed okay DE filters clogging of the vertical grids and the DE filter, whether by rust, calcium buildup, or soda ash, right, may increase the pressure and, 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 and compromise effective filtration. If you suspect this problem, clean the filter elements and check for clogging of the fine nylon mesh covering the septa. Treating the septa to a light acid wash and hosing with a strong stream of water will usually relieve the problem. Okay, so. If that's your issue, handle it accordingly. Now, sand and DE filters, with sand filters and DE filters to a lesser extent, you can get into trouble when soda ash or coagulants are fed into the skimmer too fast. And skimmer basket is where stuff is basically sucked out of the pool, right? The skimmer skims the top of the water and kind of makes sure that the leaves and everything on top makes it to, to the pool. So you get people that break fingernails and fingernails will float. It'll eventually make it through the skimmer basket. Um, so, so a lot of people use that skimmer basket to introduce chemicals, you know, back through the system and into the water. So if you do that, again, just be careful on what you're doing. Again, if you find that you're, that, that you're having these issues, then maybe you're feeding into the skimmer too fast, or maybe you should find a different way to uh, introduce 
this particular uh, uh, coagulants or you know whatever you're trying to do into that skimmer. Um, that way, you can uh, stop those headaches later on. Okay. In these cases, some chemicals do not have sufficient opportunity to dissolve. Rather than passing through the bed in solution, the chemicals clog the media and raise the pressure. The key is to introduce these agents more slowly or dissolve them before introducing them into the skimmer. So again, there are some occasions where soda ash and some of that stuff you need to actually mix in a bucket first, then introduce it slowly into the system and it will pass through the system as it's supposed to. Okay. So note, alum should never be used with the DE filter. It would only solidify the filter cake. Okay. All right. So Moving right along, sand or DE is entering the pool. Sand and DE filters, okay. One suspect with sand or DE clouded water is the push-pull valve. If this valve is left in an intermediate position, okay, media can flow back into the pool, If back into the pool. If this obvious answer doesn't suffice, you'll need to look for solutions inside the tank, okay. Sand filters, Broken laterals or undersized sand that is similar, that is smaller than the manufacturer recommendation are common culprits as well. Replacement of these components and or the sand itself is recommended, okay? DE filters. The first suspect is torn or worn out septa, which allow DE to flow into the pool. The nylon mesh on the septa, which is basically another word for calling it the grid, okay? The nylon mesh on the septa can be repaired depending on how large a hole or tear is present. And think small. A hole the size of a pencil lead will allow DE to escape. Okay, so it's, I don't care how big the hole is. It has to be replaced, all right? Tip, always check the points where the mesh is sewn to the frame of the grid. Even slight unraveling will allow DE to enter the pool. So don't take no chances. Always err on the side of caution and replace that grid in, if necessary, okay? DE may be migrating back into the main drain or skimmer when the pump shuts off. Excessive flow rate through the filter can also force standard DE into the pool. Again, filtering pump should be sized, size should be checked. A damaged internal air bleed also will allow DE back into the pool. So make sure that the air bleed, internal air bleed is checked, okay? Make sure there's a check valve between the filter and the pump if you open up the DE filter. DE will flow through the pump into the pool through the skimmer, okay? So the check valve is always good to have. That way, again, whatever you're pushing through never has a way of coming backwards. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, okay? Sometimes you don't know right away. And, uh, yeah, that media ain't supposed to be in the pool, right? It's only supposed to stay in the filter itself. And as water pushes through, the filter in the media, whatever's clean is clean. The clean water, the filtered water comes out on the other side. Uh, not getting caught up in the heater element and or coming back into the pool. All right. So. So moving forward. The next symptom is there's a buildup of air. What do you do in the case of a buildup of air? Okay. Y'all got to forgive me. <laughs> Uh, general tips. First, Lee. First, Lee. Is that even a word? First, Lee. Something I made up. Uh, air present in the air filter tank can compromise filtering action. Okay. In sand filters, it's a prime suspect in channeling. In DE units, it may disrupt the filter cake. So, you want to make sure that the air uh, in, in the tank, water is supposed to push the air out and push the air through. Okay, and it's supposed to, you know, so it shouldn't be no air stagnant air. Water is going to push the air all the way out. All right, that's how it should be. More importantly, however, air pressure buildup in the filter can cause, can be hazardous. It can cause catastrophic conditions. Anyone who has seen a filter fracture knows the potential for damage and possible injury. You just so happen to be there when this fracturing happens. Yeah, dude, I mean, man, I feel sorry for you. Air in the filter tank. If there's a problem with the air in the tank, check for hairline cracks or leaks and plumbing connections on the suction side of the pump. Because it's sucking. shouldn't be no air. But if there's cracks or hairline or anything not 
any joints not uh, you know glued or fitted properly, then it's going to cause air to come in. Okay, a low water level in the pool is another suspect. Air may enter through the skimmer. Releasing the air is always important to release the air. It's always important to release any air present in the filter tank. Okay, side note, many filters are equipped with automatic venting devices. Um, so like, for instance, uh, you know, uh, and let's just say water, like water systems as it pertains to heating and air conditioning. And I'm guys, and you, you know, forgive me for referring back, but that's a lot of the time, it's my background. Right? I spent a lot of time there. We had these things that sat at the highest levels of the water uh, pipes. So if any air was introduced to the system, air is going to make its way to the highest level, and then pst, it can be pst, out of the little air vents to allow the air to escape. That way you don't get an uh, air lock or you get a lot of rumbling in the lines, you know, when there's air in the system. Now, pool piping is all made out of PVC. Most of it's underground. So you're not gonna never, you're not gonna know either way, but you will be able to tell, especially at the pump. If it's cavitating and you got a lot of air moving, when you look down into that pump, there's a lot of air bubbles and stuff in there, then that's a good indication that you have an air leak somewhere, right? And there's air entering the system. So again, if you have the automatic air valves, then it should get rid of it. But even with that, and you still see cavitating at the pump, then there's air being introduced into your system. Okay. So release the air is always so remember it's always important to release any air present in the filter tank. Okay. And so again, many filters are equipped with automatic venting devices. Not only will the presence of air inhibit good filtration, it can also increase the hazardous pressure. Air is easily released by opening the pressure release valve and allowing the air to escape when a steady stream of water comes out of the valve. Then all of the trapped air has been released. Okay, so there it is, there y'all. Again, remember, uh, you can find this article at the Pool of Spa News. All right, um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it, y'all. And so uh, it's very important, very important. So that's troubleshooting pool and spa filters. Okay, pool filter if it's a pool. If all you have is a spa, then it's going to have a filter on it too. And again, remember. Uh, air trapped in the system is never a good thing. And like I said, all, the, all it does is increase the potential for hazards or it, it increases the hazardous potential. Um, and uh, again, a part of being a pool or spa operator is to reduce those hazards and those potentials of anybody being harmed, hurt or harmed, i.e. you or the homeowner, right? Or the facility operator. All right. So with that being said, man, again, I want to thank you guys for chiming in to this particular podcast. Uh, title, and, and, and so those of you sliding in on the end, we're talking about troubleshooting, pool and spa filters. Uh, and what we did, what we went over right now was a handy guy for service technicians working on pool and spa filters. All right. So please make sure that you subscribe, 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 like, 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 share, subscribing is to, so that you guys get in and you, and you get in line, right? Liking is to put me in the proper algorithm, right? Because the more likes that we get, the more that YouTube sees what we're doing and they're going to put us in the proper place so that other people just like yourself can get a chance to get a hold and get some of this information. Uh, sharing is so it's caring. It's so that the other people get a, other people that you know that they might be in your system, a part of your group, a part of your uh, your community, can, can get a, a feel for what Haywood's Pool of Spot is doing over here. We need everybody to know. We need everybody to know. So subscribe, like, get us in that algorithm, share so other people know, and make sure, last but not least, you hit that notification bell so that every time we go live or we upload a video, you'll understand where we are. And even if you don't come right in, you can remember to come back to us because I'm sitting at the top of your computer, your phone, or wherever your YouTube feed shows up. It'll show me and that I uh, posted something for that particular day and uh, let you in a little bit on what we're talking about. All right. So that concludes this podcast. I want to, again, thank you guys for coming in. You could have been anywhere else, but you decided to hang out with Haywell's Pool of Spa. Again, we're taking you through our education series. This is part four of our education series uh, entitled Troubleshooting Pool and Spa Filters. All right. So you want to see what we've been doing? Let's go backwards and check us out. 
uh, so we got a part one, two, and three. This is part four. And uh, hey, man, moving forward, love you to life. Again, thank you guys for chiming in, hanging out, chatting, you know. Uh, 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 and remember, if there's anything that you didn't understand or didn't quite get, always go to the description box. At the bottom of the description box, I usually give you a description of what we're doing, what we're talking about, and at the bottom where you can find this information. All right? So go check it out, man. Look it up for yourself. Sharon is caring. See you at the next pool.